Hey, this is Nick from Income Digs. Welcome back to another awesome video tutorial. We're gonna continue on with QuickBooks Online and specifically talking about rental property management within QuickBooks Online. So following up on the other videos, if you haven't watched them all yet, that's okay. This is kind of a standalone one, but uh, I would recommend you at least check out some of the videos we put on uh, for invoicing your tenants. We're gonna continue with that today. And we're gonna talk about accounts receivable. So any property management business is collecting rent, okay? Whether you do that yourself, so you own and manage your own properties, or you're just a property manager, you're certainly working to collect rent from your tenants. That's almost, you know, that's one of the key things that you're doing, all right? And in my opinion, QuickBooks Online is an awesome tool to do that. It's built with a great accounts receivable functionality, and I'm gonna dive into that today and talk through how you can use the built-in functionality of QuickBooks to manage your AR, or accounts receivable. All right, so let's get into this. We're gonna look at my sample company here, Income Digs Property Management. And right off the bat, as I'm looking at the dashboard on QuickBooks Online, it's, it shows me an invoice summary, which I love. Okay, so this shows me that I have, you know, $2,500 not due yet, but $1,700 overdue. And I can click into this and see that. This is one of my favorite views to go into is just my invoices view. And you can get to it in several different ways. You can also go sales, invoices, and do it that way. Another way is you can look at your um, what you have due by your customers. So you can just go to customers, and this is a neat way to see you know how much is overdue and how much is open in total. What I love about this is I'll use this to run my you know cash flow analysis. So I'll say, you know, how much rent do I still have outstanding that I can expect at some point in time? And we can click into this to drill down. I'm going to do that. So I click into this and drill down and I see that Wendell Johnson has one overdue invoice. If I click on this, it's going to show me the list of all their invoices. Looks like there's one for March 1st, there's one for February 1st that's not paid yet. And if I click into that, I can see what's going on here. So this one is for their, their monthly rent plus a security deposit and it hasn't been paid yet, okay? So um, I would want to understand that kind of on some kind of scheduled basis. And for my business, I'll go into this um, toward the end of the month. So what I do is I'll create invoices. So for here, I'll create invoices. Right now I'm at uh, today's date is you know 27th of February. And so I might go in here and say, what's coming up to be due soon? And then as we get into the month, a few days late, I'll, I'll see who's late and, and who needs to send me rent. And what we can do with these is we can select all and send those invoices or send reminders to our tenants, which is a great little task, you know, if you want to do it yourself, but a, a VA can do that as well, is to run, send uh, invoice reminders on some kind of cadence, okay? So that's in general, you know, how this can be set up. And so let's just look at how we would receive payment for these invoices. Now, I recommend you use QuickBooks Online Payments because for ACH transfers, it's free. And um, it comes right in and would record that the payment has been received. So free bank transfer. You have to set up what account it would go into, of course, but ultimately uh, that, that invoice will show it up paid. Let's say that you're getting paid through some other method. Maybe you're using Cozy or Rentmatic or you're, you have some kind of way to get a payment. You're getting a check, you're getting cash, anything like that. You would go into QuickBooks and mark a invoice as paid kind of manually, right? You would say that I received this check. So you would select the invoice and then click receive payment. That's one way to do it. Another way you could do it is just to start from the customer, okay? So I'm here at the customer, let's say I'm at Wendell. I can go up here, great little summary is showing me right here, what's open, what's overdue. I can just go new transaction payment and it's gonna bring me up an empty payment where if I tell it how much it's for, 1700, it's gonna guess that it's probably for that invoice, right? And I'll probably say yes, indicate where to deposit it to and save and close it. And then it'll disappear as an overdue invoice. Now I only have the 850 that's open, okay? So let's go back to our invoices here and just see what I have going on. This is currently all of my invoices. So you can see this one is zeroed out. There's nothing owed on it yet. And this 2550 is also not due yet. It's gonna be due on the first of the month, okay? How does all this look on your balance sheet? And you know what I'm gonna do quickly? I'm gonna get rid of that. I'm gonna cancel that payment out, all right? So one payment made, I'm gonna grab this and I'm gonna delete it just 
to show on reporting how this looks. All right, so where does accounts receivable show up on your balance sheet? Well, it's an asset, right? And it's only gonna show up if you're using accrual accounting, okay? So there's always a question about accrual versus cash accounting. All right, now cash accounting is what you have to use for taxes. The IRS requires you to use cash accounting, meaning you can only recognize income or expenses when the cash actually changes hands. So what that means is if I were to have an invoice for a customer that is like December of 2018, they owe me money. If I'm using accrual accounting, I recognize that income in December. If I don't get paid till January, um, then in cash accounting, I would not recognize that income until January, okay? It's a really important distinction for taxes. I tend to prefer accrual accounting for my day-to-day -day running of the business and I, and I can convert over to cash when I need to report for the IRS. All right, so looking at this accrual balance sheet for this year, I'm able to see my fixed assets, which we went over in the various other uh, videos about how to track your assets and your depreciation. I'm gonna bundle that up for now. And um, you can see that I have an accounts receivable of 4250. So I have an open accounts receivable of 4250. Now this is for all year. So something that's important to, to keep in mind, if I were to do this for this month, you're gonna see that number change, right? And why did it change? It's because some of those invoices are marked as March 1st, okay? So because this is only up till the 28th of February, those don't show up here. But um, if you do them for this whole year, those would show up because they're contained within the year. This is a great way if you want to see like what's going on with those accounts receivable. Of course, you can use those reports that we were just looking at. But you can also click in here to drill down and to understand here's the different invoices you have. Now, if we were to receive a payment on this, like I did before, I'm going to show you, do it one more time, receive payment, save and close it. You'll see how that gets reflected in your accounts receivable. Here's the invoice. Here's the payment, it zeroes me out, right? And then starting on March 1st again, I, I increase, I debit my accounts receivable with all these other invoices going out to my tenants, all right? Now remember, you can invoice for, it doesn't have to be revenue, right? We invoiced Wendell for a security deposit. And so how do we understand that that hits not our rental income, but our security deposit? And that, all has to do with products and services, okay? So I encourage you to set up your products and services when you set up your properties. Your products and services is simply the lists of products or services that you sell. Now we talked about how the construction costs would work. The rental income is probably a little bit easier to understand. This is really just your, um, your listing of rents. So if I have a new property, I'll probably set up 123 Main Street, you know, unit one, unit two, the different monthly rents I'm getting, even the security deposits. And how we map that to our chart of accounts is all in the setup. So if I were to look at the security deposit one, you can see that the income account, it goes to 123 Main Street security deposit, right? Whereas these other ones go to rental income, all right? So I'll encourage you to, when you have all your units, so let's say you have a property of three unit, set up a service for each of those rents. Now the sales price, is recommended and, and it'll pre-populate your form, but you're not set to it. So let me show you that. So if I were to take, let's say 456 Maple Apartment A and create an invoice for that, right? Let's say I just go um, new invoice. I'm not sure who the customer is there, but let's just say it's Jack. All right, and let's just say uh, this is an invoice for the 1st of March again. All right. Oops. All right, now I can just start typing that 456 Maple Apartment A rent. It's going to pre-populate the rate, and I can just write in your monthly rent, but I could adjust this if I needed to. You could also add different services like late fees. Let's do that. I don't have that currently in my setup, so let me show you how that would happen. So let's pretend that, that this customer hasn't paid and we need to charge them a late fee. What we would do is maybe it's like after a, a grace period, you can start typing late fee and I don't have it in my products or services yet, but I can add it on the fly, add that service of late fee. You could create a new category for late fees if you wanted to. And maybe it's like $20. In the income account, maybe it's late fees. Okay, and if I do that, it's gonna pop up my chart of accounts, income, and you can just say something like that. 
And that would allow you to differentiate between your standard rental income and your late fees. All right. And sometimes what people do is like, here's one late fee for being late on the you know fifth of the month. And then beyond that, you have like a daily late fee where it's maybe like two days worth at five, something like that might be the case, right? And you can manage all that stuff right here in QuickBooks and then at any given time, see your accounts receivable and what you're owed, all right? So that's a really great way to, to do it. Now, I do wanna show you on the balance sheet, we have our security deposits. Remember, the, the security deposit is a liability. You technically owe that back to your tenant once they move out barring any kind of you know work that needs to be done so how do you return that security deposit right i'm going to show you exactly how to do that so i tend to like journal entries for that so if i were to say with the one customer of mine has a security deposit if they were to move out and i would to return this i could do that simply by writing a check to them so i can go up i can do expense i can do check whatever the case might be and i can log it to my customer, okay, category, I would do one, two, three, actually, I might start typing security deposits, right, one, two, three main security deposit, and I can say return security deposit, and that would be 850 bucks, all right, save and close. And you'll see that that falls away from my security deposit. It's now zeroed out. If I can click into this, I can see what happened here. Here's when I got the security deposit. Here's when I paid it back. Now you could also within this, you could say, oops, that was the wrong, wrong way, right? Here's when I paid it back. You could also within this say that there were some, some, um, some things that happened, some repairs and maintenance that you had to incur. Now, you, I like to do this with a journal entry. You could probably do it with a check as well, but I'm gonna avoid this one for now. I'm gonna delete it. And just show you real quick how to do that with a journal entry. So if I wanted to pay this back, but they still owe me some money for repairs and maintenance, right? So how would I do that? I'll go journal entry, whatever the date might be, and let's go security deposit. You're giving the entire security deposit back, right? You're, you're going to debit the entire liability. No matter what, you're giving it back. Okay. Now, you could say that you're going to write them a check from your checking account for $850, but I'm not going to do that because let's say that they I had to clean the carpets and it cost me $250. Bucks. That means I'm only going to pay them $600 back. Okay. Now, where is the other $200 going to come from? Well, you could log it as um, a refund to your repairs and maintenance, but you could also put it as a revenue item to say like um, retained security deposits. Now, keep in mind that different states have different rules about how you have to document all this and all that. I'm not getting into that with this video. I'm just showing you the accounting for it. But if you wanted to, you could set up an income account for you could set up, let me see, a income account for re retained security deposits. It would show up as revenue for you because in theory, it should be offsetting your repairs and maintenance. And you could record it just like that. So your security deposit is going to clear your balance sheet. And on your, actually, no, let's go to our profit and loss for this month, we're going to see the retained security deposits there. All right. This was a roundabout way to showing you how many different things you could do in QuickBooks with accounts receivable. There's so much. So I was responding to a lot of specific questions about that, but keep them coming. I want to know what you want to learn about this. I find QuickBooks to be an awesome tool for managing this. Of course, if you have a lot of tenants, it can become difficult, but because there's a lot of data entry, but the cool thing about it is you can also integrate it with your other systems. Specifically, you can integrate it with something like Podio. And I'm going to show you exactly how to do that. I'm going to show you how within Podio, you can manage your properties, your tenants. And when they reach a certain status, you can automatically create 
the products and services in QuickBooks. You can automatically create invoices in QuickBooks. When the invoices get paid, you can reflect it back on a Podio. And you can integrate these things all together and automate a lot of this data entry. It's super exciting. It's like the holy grail of, of what you want to be doing, right? Podio is super good for operational. If you haven't used it yet, I'm going to show you some awesome stuff with it. And QuickBooks is super good at accounting. And we can combine those things together. Uh, with some integration. So I'm going to show you that on some of the upcoming videos. But in the meantime, I want to know exactly what questions you have about what I've showed you, what other things you want to see with managing rental properties, managing flips and rehabs within QuickBooks Online. All right, I'll talk to you guys on the next video. Thanks.